Delicious Music Festival 2023. It's still beans. Uh, you know, it's been a minute since I filmed you last. I caught you actually here last year. The night market stage. The night market stage. I miss that stage. I like that stage. That yeah. stage is more in line with uh, my tax bracket. <laughs> it's free, so that's a little more me, you know? If I, if I can remember right, I think you were trying to auction off some farm animals last year. We sold them all. Lovely. Ten cents per cow, dude. Mostly those little tiny cows. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're somewhere. They're in a better place now. <laughs> You've had a huge year since, um, and you just, you know, we were talking for a second, but, but how are you feeling uh, being back home? Well, it feels, it feels great, but at first it felt weird because my house didn't even feel like my house. Oh, I didn't yeah. even recognize Washington when we got back because spring had happened in the time that we were gone, yeah. and like trees had been removed, new buildings had come in, it was like, wow. You know, your your house is the van and the hotel room every night, 34 nights, which is not that much for real touring people, but for me, it's a long time. It's a big adjustment. My kid turned six. My house was clean. <laughs> I could actually walk in there. It felt weird. It's like Twilight Zone. Yeah. But it feels great to be back. That's good. Um, you know, and just seeing you in this current iteration versus like last year, for example, There's there's been a, a lot of changes and... I think over time, you know, you've had this group going for about 16 years. You've had a lot of different forms. Um, tonight you played solo at the Apex. Yeah, what happened is I ate the rest of the band. You ate the rest of the yeah, band? Yeah, dude. If you roll the footage back and you watched about a year ago, I was 206 pounds before I ate the fan. Now I'm at a double buck 87, dude. So some of the band members were hefty. Some of them were lighter, you know. Yeah. I spared Sean Groda, though, the amazing bass player, who is a dear best friend. Yeah. Well, you're very merciful, then. Um, you know, ha has your current iteration of sound, I, I know, obviously, some of that comes from, from the, the internet aspect, but what's kind of the, the future of Steel Beans for you? Like, do you like playing solo? Do you like playing in a band? Like, what are you, what are you trying to do next? I really like the family of having all my weirdo friends join me and writing the songs, teaching them the songs, man. I, I just like being up there jumping around and being, uh, it's more of an outlet for my energy and uh, to be out front. Yeah. But the solo show is fun because I get to tell the audience to fuck off. I yeah. get to do whatever. And also, it's fun to be on the road doing it now yeah. because... <laughs> Because the audience, you know, they'll be like, come on, hurry up, play a song. And I'll be like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Or I come down there, fucking skull fuck okay. you in front of this whole audience. <laughs> you got and that personal. Goes, Whoa, I just saw this on the guy on the internet. I thought he was going to be sweet. And then they get me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of a, uh, you can, you can uh, deliberate how you want to be. I can channel all my Iggy, Gigi, ODB. Uh, energy in the and I try to explain to people the band is like a theatrical piece where it's a good 45 to an hour song after song it's it's planned out it's still improvised but this the solo show is entirely random oh yeah uh, I didn't follow a set list tonight at all and most of the shows we did on the road I, I did but I still refer to the shows as we huh. my friend Sean and Willie are with me and I, I talk as we because it's this collective energy and they keep the we have so much fun on the road that uh, it never feels like a solo show and, and I never wanted I'm going to tear up here but I never wanted the band to be about me I just wanted it to be about the songs so it's kind of bittersweet that the solo show is the thing yeah I hear you but, uh, I mean I can't complain it's just funny yeah. <laughs> I love fucking with people it's, it's, how, it's, it's how it's gone I hear you and you know, that's sweet that you still have, you know, your, your really close friends on the road, and I'm sure that helps a lot. Oh, yeah. We're making fun of everything, and we're having so much fun. I installed a loudspeaker into the van. <laughs> nice. And it fucking, it has, it was 50 bucks, and it's got nine sirens, and I can talk over the fucking thing. <laughs> that's great. Dude, it's hilarious. I love that. We're whooping people. People cut you off. You hit them with the, it, if you toggle up, it goes... It's got the standard, the toggle down is a bang. <laughs> so I'm constantly hitting people with it. Woo, bang. That's fun. That's fucking sick. And, you know, I, I realize, uh, as you were saying, you know, 
things have kind of taken a certain form sonically, and just because of uh, you know how things have gone with with the internet and everything. But uh, when you have these switches and kind of sound and, and approach or, or or vibe to your music, I guess you know a lot of that comes from writing. When, when you're sitting down to write, is it kind of like a conscious thing when you have a change in genre or a change in sound, or is it more of kind of like a like a spur of the moment felt thing for you? Well, I really, in terms of the band changing, I really just follow my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, in, two, uh, in 2013, I lost my rehearsal space at my old house. Yeah. And I had like a six piece going the first time I had like a good horn section. And losing that rehearsal space, I went, I lived in my grandma's backyard, and I just started to do the solo show by default. Yeah. And um, flash forward a couple years, uh, my girlfriend is pregnant with my son, living in my grandma's backyard. Yeah. And I just worked this moving company. I just saved up every paycheck from that place, got my own house, put together a nine-piece band in 2017. Yeah. Started a lawn company with that money I'd saved right before my son was born. Yeah. And uh, and then it was such a release to go back to having a big band and articulate some more advanced ideas. But then after two years of that and having you know, to deal with nine guys. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to just fucking go back to being a three piece, being more stoogy. Yeah. And, and uh, so 2020, that was the 2020 band yeah. with Aaron Hale and Chris Black. And that was the band that the Molotov Cocktail Lounge was, that's just another song out of like 20 songs we did. But we got robbed because COVID happened like right after that band started. Oh. I'm kind of wandering a little on that question. I'm going to try to tighten it up for you. Oh, you're good. No worries. Uh, I just really like to sit down and just write whatever is happening. And I think any intention is bad. It's never going to turn out with what you plan to have. And uh, so it's kind of a combination. Yeah. One thing that that kept me from putting out any albums in recent years is there's, you know, not to suck my own dick, but there's hundreds of these different ideas and songs. It's like. Oh, should I put together another ragtag collection of my favorite songs at the moment? Or should I do a concept thing where it's just all rock or it's yeah. just all the psych music? So I started doing just an all rock album. And then the next year, 2021, I had the four piece of just all psych music. Yeah. And then last year, the nine piece. And uh, yeah, you know, I am a limited, I am limited in the voices the instruments doing the solo show so it does lean towards rock better I'll do reggae I'll do jazz there were some shows on the tour where I had Sean come up I flipped the octaver pedal on and he just played a walking bass line that's sweet and then I'd go into a jazz beat that's nice yeah there was a couple shows where I just pulled up people I'd never met before and got them to get on drums wow the, the opening band in San Francisco when we were sound checking he got on drums I got on drums and we started to duet a little bit wow and then I started playing song for the dead just to see if he knew the intro and this guy he knew the intro note for note <laughs> so fucking towards the end of my set this this kid from the fucking opening band in san francisco i was like come up here and we did that song dude and it was fucking amazing that's incredible it was so cool man and i'm sure for for that kid that was a a huge moment like ultimately it's a you know, the fact that he learned that song and got to come up and play, that, that's yeah, really cool that you... He knew it note for note, and I was like, I can't believe you know that. And then I got yeah. to do my Mark Lanigan impression, so I was happy. <laughs> nice. yeah. Who in the last year, Mark, has been like my favorite dude. After he died, I went and listened to every one of his solo albums. Mm -hmm. And it's been, it's been inspiring. That guy's fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, I've got a few just kind of more rapid-fire questions. Uh, if that's okay with you, I, I appreciate all the input on your kind of creative process. I appreciate you listening, man. I talk a totally. lot. Oh, you're good. Uh, you know, what's eating at my mind? What, what was tour with Tenacious D like? They're the sweetest guys, man. You know, on two of the three shows, Jack was waiting off the side of the stage to give me a hug. Aw. And it was like... Holy shit. He, he, I brought... I, I did my best to do a different fucking one of my outfits every night. Yeah. I did the Spaceman, I did the Cowboy the first night, and then the third night I did like a full leopard print bodysuit with chainmail. Oh, I saw the picture of that. He's that was like, cool. He's like, I never know what to expect from you. He was, they're awesome. Their whole crew are the sweetest guys. Yeah. And you know, like I brought Sean and Willie and Clint, and the first night they were probably 
probably like, all right, figuring us out. Yeah. And by the third night, they they loved us. They realized we're not like drunks or junkies or anything. And yeah. We're crazy, but we're not, you know. Yeah, not in a bad way. I didn't show up and fuck it up. Thank God I don't fucking party or get down like that anymore. I would have fucked that all up for sure. <laughs> totally. I would have puked on KG shoes or something, dude. <laughs> you know. That yeah, would have. That wouldn't have been good. I, yeah. Um, have you seen the Mario movies? I haven't, man. I never have time to do anything. My yeah. kid's seen it. Yeah. He said it was cool. Yeah, I saw it a couple weeks ago. It's it's fire. It's, I gotta go see it. It's a good film. Hell yeah. And uh, Charlie Day is yeah. fucking. Uh, he's like, Luigi. Yeah. 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 J- Jack Black nailed it as Bowser. Like absolutely nailed it. He's crazy, dude. That guy is a visionary. And to see him behind the scenes, like during the sound check, he really steers that whole boat. And he's like. You know, he's like, let's do that part again. Yeah. One of you's a little flat. Sean and I were just like. Yeah, he gives off this air of kind of silly, but he he's pretty with it. It sounds like. Dude, yeah, he's he's fun, man. That's you know, right. He has an energy to him, and uh, we kind of felt like he was the, you know, like in our group. Uh, my job is to boost everybody up, make everybody feel good, and, yeah. and he has that about him, you know, for sure. Um. I saw recently that you uh, you got to jam with Dweezil Zappa. What what did you all uh, what did what songs did you jam on? If if any come to mind, like what what's the highlight of that for you? Well, he gave us a tour of a studio. He is like the gentlest, nicest fucking dude, and I can't believe he invited me to his house. It's amazing. I mean, holy shit! Yeah. Seeing his studio and seeing how humble that guy is, and. Uh, you know, like we're looking at his rack gear, mm-hmm. and like in the shelving, there's like a Grammy tucked to the back with fucking spider webs on. <laughs> Just it. casually, in yeah. In the back, you can't even see it. I was like, hell yeah, dude. I sat down at his drum kits, but to be honest, I was, <laughs> I tread. I treaded lightly on that. <laughs> like I would have liked to just mind. lay into it, but I was all, I was, I don't really fan out on people, you know, everyone's yeah. people, but I did feel a little, uh, Got a little shy, you know. Yeah. Oh, sure. And then uh, leaving Dweezil's leaving Dweezil's house, we went to uh, Anderson Pack's Pizza Place in Koreatown. Mm-hmm. I texted Anderson and I said, "I'm gonna check out your pizza place because I keep seeing you post about it." He's like, "Great, I'm here." And I went, "Fuck." Put, put, put the music on. Put, let's, let's put the music on. Yeah. And then I put the music on, and we were like, hey, why is it not working? Oh, we're still connected to Dweezil's Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, funny. Yeah, 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 dude. It's so fucking silly. Oh, jeez. I got to switch Bluetooth. <laughs> and he was fucking awesome, and he was showing my video to the people that work at his restaurant. Have you seen this shit? That's funny. I can't, be- I can't believe it, man. It's surreal. That is unbelievable. And I don't fan out on people, you know, but I, I'm a little shy at first because I don't want to bother people. I don't yeah. want to burden them because they must have people all day. Totally. Yeah. They've got it, you know. Um, I'm curious, uh, where does the name Steel Beans come from? Well, in 2006 or something, we used to change the band name every week. We were the Cripple Cretans. We were Zebra Fucker. We were a lot of things. And... Yeah. Um, uh, my mom gave me like twenty dollars to get some baked beans and some shasta from the store. But instead, we went to our our buddy's house. It was our weed dealer that had a pool table, and I was like, "Bet you a dollar game." But he's like a tournament pool player, so I just lost dollar game after dollar game <laughs> until I fronted a dime bag from him, and then we just stole beans at the safe. <laughs> like, we're gonna have to steal beans now. Oh, steal beans! Yeah. So oh wow. We went in and fucking we had the under our coats. This is the Safeway on Rucker. Nice. We were just like this, and I was like, dude, this is fucking stupid. But let's go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a a three liter of Shasta and just a shitload of baked beans. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't come back empty-handed. My mom gave me like twenty bucks or whatever. So it's literally that, and it's the dumbest band name, and a lot of people, uh... Yeah. It makes me think of, like, uh, 9-11 stuff, you know? 
Well, that was the thing, dude, is when the band first came out, beans were really hot. Everybody smoked oxys at that time. That was the cool thing. That's who? And so people were like, oh, you guys are into beans. I was like, no, I don't like downers. And then a few years later, these steel beans, like, reached, we already knew about all that shit.
that band in. Oh, really? A gig or a house show. Yeah. So that was the first place that we really like, you know, tried to get everyone to come out. I played Jimmy Z since I was like a teenager in other bands, punk rock oh, yeah. bands. But uh, playing up there was the first time, so it was kind of cool to go full circle and to have everything that's uh, happened to me recently and then go up there again. Yeah, come back together. That is unbelievable. I didn't realize one of your first shows with that with this group or this moniker was here. That's that's wild. I mean, it felt fucking great, you know. It, the that audience was huge, man. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, I, I try to explain to my guys like don't feel bad if we hit a show on the road where there's five people. Yeah. Because I played for five people forever. I'll still do just as good of a show. But it was funny to play with the D in front of 7,500 people and then like coming back, you know, play for 20 people in Salt Lake City. Yeah. And have the audience like just fucking drunk white girls like, Daddy, fucking loud. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then I was like, is this your girlfriend that's fucking loud? I was like, Sorry, dude. <laughs> Just shutting people down. That's, that's really funny. Um, um, I feel so lucky to, and it's all surreal, man. Yeah. I was happy just to be mowing lawns and writing songs and playing shows every three months here, changing the band up. So all this is like a bonus level because I never thought I'd live to see my 20s. I, I never thought I'd live to see my 30s. And I feel like this is a bonus round of what happens when you stick around. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> Jeremy, it's it's been a pleasure having you on the program you, tonight. Man. Really okay. appreciate you taking time because I know you're worn out. It's it's been a, a while. It's been a road trip. <laughs> it's been a real crazy ass thing, dude. Uh, There's been a lot of obstacles and yeah. like crazy things, but the one constant is coming here and just driving down to you. And even even if it's not like on my way. I'll just go double down here just to look at everything, just because, you know? Of course. It's a, it's a beautiful, nostalgic site. Um, make sure to go and uh, check out Steel Beans on all social media. It's all linked below. Make sure to smash that motherfucking like and subscribe button. Uh, smash! Smash! You're watching Mellowvision and... Uh, Seriously, Jeremy, thank you so much for taking time to, to talk with me. Thanks for having dude. I'll sit here and talk for hours, dude. Let's do it again. I'd love to see it. Let's do it again soon. Thank you again, man.
Oh wow, yeah, you're yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty built. Look at those calves. Oh my god. Holy shit. It's just my thorax that sucks. See, the thoracic thorax region is like, it's like those kids toys where you slide the different pieces, you know? Yeah. And that was whoever kid designed me, they fucked up. <laughs> In the mid region. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That was great, man. Thank you. All right, one more of this right here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I like right there. Oh, he's he's uh, sucking himself off right now. <laughs>